um, many, many, many of us, many, many, many folks um, started started the week, but they are not here today. And so for life, we are grateful and we thank you. We ask that you will bless us, that you will forgive us of our sins today. We pray that you will strengthen our faith walk with you. We we thank you for your provisions uh, for throughout our lives. And so in a special way today, we want to remember, especially Sister Olivia Handy, who's uh, going to have a medical procedure today. We ask that you will guide those who will attend to her and that, that she will have su a successful outcome. We want to remember in a special way, Brother uh, Ronnie Rice, who who is um, very ill and currently hospitalized. We ask Heavenly Father that you will do your healing work in his in his life. You found him in his mother's womb. You've kept him until now. Doctors may say one thing, but you can say you can say and do something else. So we 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 place Ronnie Rice in into your hands, and we ask that your will be done in his life and for him. We pray for his wife um, that she continues to stand by his side. Give her the strength that that she needs. We pray that you will strengthen her faith. Bless his children. We pray. We pray that you will also be with them and uh, and may may the, their hope in you continue to be strengthened. Today we want to present the man of God that will present uh, the message. You you've been with him in preparation, and now as he prepares to share, we pray that you'll speak through him. And and may we may we receive the blessing that you have in store for us. We want to remember our pastor, Pastor Samuel. We thank you for his commitment to you, for his faithfulness to to, the, to his call, for for him being a faithful uh, minister. And so as we celebrate him throughout this month, along with all the other pastors on the line, and and who may pastors in our varied congregations, we pray that you will bless them too. Watch over us. And we thank you for this opportunity to gather around uh, on this platform. Speak to us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then thank you. Thank, Amen. thank you. Thank you for praying. Elder, uh, family, if you'll help me welcome this morning to the table. Uh, uh, we are grateful to have with us in morning manner, one who God has prepared uh, to provide us with uh, the manner for the morning. Help me welcome this morning, Dr. Uh, David Williams. Uh, he is Associate Professor of Worship and Sacred Music at the SDA Theological Seminary at Andrews University. Uh, he is also the convener of the uh, annual Music and Worship Conference at the seminary, and we are grateful that he is with us. Uh, he is indeed uh, one who is equipped and prepared to help us to direct sacred music and we are so grateful that he's here today to uh, to bless us with the word for this morning, Doc. Uh, we welcome you to Morning Manor. We are glad you are at the table, and we turn the time over to you to share what God has given you for us this morning. Welcome again to the Morning Manor. Good morning and uh, happy Wednesday to all of you. Uh, it is so good to be here and praying with you and hearing these testimonies. Thank you. Uh, brother Pastor Samuel for your ministry, and uh, of course to my sister uh, Nashoni Chang. Um, we she is a dear, precious person to me. Um, we collaborated in ministry at the seminary for many years, and through some of the most challenging years of of COVID, and um, I'm. I'm blessed to have journeyed with you, Nishoni. Thank you. I'm, I'm just praising the Lord for this ministry today. Amen. I mean, this, uh, all these people from across the world are on this meeting right now, just here to worship and hear a word from the Lord. God is good. The, what? what how, how can this be? How can this be? People are around the world gathered at the same moment in the same digital space to worship him. God is so good. Uh, greetings from Alberta, Canada, where it is 510 in the morning. And um, this is not where I live, but I am here teaching a an intensive on worship and music to pastors in the Canadian Union. They are from as 
far away as Vancouver, BC and Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, so just about the full width of this great country of Canada. Um, so uh, we're nearing the end here for that class, and I'm so glad that I could be here with you. Um, our word today is from Psalm 34. Psalm 34 and verses one through eight psalm 34 verses one through eight it says i will extol the lord at all times my praise will always be on my lips my soul will boast in the lord let the afflicted hear and rejoice glorify the lord with me let us exalt his name together. For I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He, he delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him. Out of all his troubles, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. I come to tell you a story, and... It's a story I recently heard, a challenging story, if, if we were to go through this person's shoes. So if you could try this morning or this afternoon or wherever you are to try and put yourself in the most challenging and darkest of times. It's a story about a pastor in West Virginia, and he is pastoring a small church, as many pastors do. He is pastoring a challenging church, as many pastors do. He is pastoring a church that wants to be coddled instead of grow the kingdom as many pastors do. It seems that anything he does is wrong. He wants to take a few of his church members to grow the kingdom by starting a church plant as one of the ministries of his church. This is a very wicked thing to do. If you could just imagine the, the burden of this pastor's heart to grow the kingdom and his elders and his church members seek to undermine every step he makes. He, he is told negative things regularly. It is now affecting his marriage. It impacts how he treats his children, his two young boys. He is incredibly discouraged. God, have you called me? I, I, am, am I worth anything? How, how, can, how can the church uh, be like this? Is this what ministry is about? One day he gets a call from his head elder, and he begins to berate him, to tell him that he is a wicked person. He, there is no evidence that he loves Jesus, and, well, the long and short of it is they will go to the conference to get him fired 
to have him discredited, and most importantly, to be disfellowshipped from the fellowship of his church. Because the church should not have such a wicked person in its ranks. This, per this pastor should not uh, defile the church by his presence in this congregation, by his uh, authority to preach the gospel. He should not even be considered a member of the denomination. What, what, what is he going to do? They, they hang up. He, he is home alone. Well, he, he gets his keys, his car keys, and goes and gets in his car and just just starts to drive. What is he going to do? So he starts to drive. <clears throat> Curiously, um, you know, I don't know about you. Um, I don't know if I would even turn on the radio, but he... Uh, he happens to be a student. He's a graduate student at a university, and he he puts his earbuds in, and he starts to listen to a professor's lecture. Okay, so now he's he's driving down the road, and well, where is he going to go? Okay, well he's he's going to go to the state park, or I, I I guess maybe it's a state park. West Virginia is a beautiful place, mountainous place, and he gets to this park. He parks his car and he begins to walk around, and eventually he finds himself up on this high bluff, uh, about uh, perhaps sixty feet high is this cliff. Or those of you in the metric, uh, what is that? Twenty meters. I'm realizing here in Canada, I have to translate uh, my American measurements. Uh, yes, yeah, so a very high cliff. And he begins to think about his ministry and his family and his, his self-worth. And he, you, you got to understand that this is taking place in, in, I think, about 2020. You know, the pandemic was difficult for all of us. It was especially difficult for pastors. The mental health, the suicide rate of pastors was tremendous. And as he stands on this cliff, he realizes that his church apparently would be better off without him. He realizes that his children could go through life happier without him bringing such misery. His wife would be happier. Her life would be easier without him. He could bring peace to his church family and his home family without him being around. And as he is about to, just as he is about to hurl himself off this cliff, he hears his professor say in his ear, if we do our work for him, for him, as best as we can, he is our judge. He is our savior. And he is our victor. You got to hear some things that he is hearing from this professor as he hears these words. What he hears now is that elder is not his judge. What, what he hears from the Holy Spirit in this moment is that he, he is called not to please this elder or his church, but to do the work. He is called to do the work as best he can. 
He can't do it as best as somebody else can. He has to do the work as best as he can. The elder is not his judge. He is not his judge. But God is his judge. And he is his savior. This pastor is not his savior by how he does his work. He, none of his pastoral ministry, none of his father or husbandly ministry is saving him. Jesus Christ is his savior. And he is already his victor. Hearing those words, he steps back from that cliff. Claiming by faith his value in his home, in ministry, and his value in Christ. This is already a a tremendous story uh, of, of God's deliverance for this pastor. But as I was told this, this, this story um, by my sister on the phone last week, she says to me, David, you are that professor. <laughs> what? Lord. David, you were that professor talking to him in his ear. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So so let me wind this back for you a minute because this is this is this is incredible and improbable and just impossible. So so get this straight in your mind. He gets in his car in his home. He puts the earbuds in his ear and hits play on his phone. He starts driving through town and it's playing. He has to drive up the mountain that takes some time. He meanders through the park. He gets to the edge of the cliff at just the right time when the words that were pre-recorded some three years before, the words now say, if we do our work for him as best as we can, he is our judge, he is our savior, he is our victor. And at that moment, this pastor was about to jump. Not a minute ago, not Two minutes later, he has no idea what this lecture is about. <laughs> he doesn't remember a word of it, except that at that moment, the Holy Spirit attended those words. They became Holy Spirit-inspired words to his mind to pause him, to speak to his heart, to radically Deliver him. Yes, the angel of the Lord encamps. He encamps. We're actually told, friends, that of our Christian literature, angels attend. I don't know if angels really care to stick around pieces of paper, but I do know that angels attend people. I know that the Holy Spirit attends people. And certainly, a hundred and some years ago, when we only had books or tracks that angels and the Holy Spirit would come near. But today we have multimedia. And when we we turn on the video, when we turn on the audio, yes, the angel of the Lord encamps those who fear him and he delivers him. Oh friends, taste and see that the Lord is Good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. I know this pastor. Obviously, he was my student. Uh, I knew he was going through a difficult time. I spoke to him on the phone when he was going through a challenging time. But I had no idea of his suicidal thoughts until he went public with this just a few weeks ago on 
the 9th of February in a public sermon. Uh, you know, we could say coincidentally, but also providentially, we went to the same high school and I was a senior when he was a freshman, three years apart, and we were in a mentor group together. Friends, I want to leave you with a, a few words of encouragement from the scripture. One, I, I hope that the text speaks for itself and in this pastor's experience. I hope that the miraculous deliverance from, from such a, a tragic decision uh, speaks for itself. But I want to speak to you. Uh, some of you are elders, you are pastors, and you are children of God, and you are called to ministry to serve him wherever you are. And so I want to just briefly encourage you in the Lord in this, some important points. You never know the impact that you are going to make on someone's life. This, in, in the, the grandest part of this story is what is so humbling to me, that my words could have such a dramatic impact in someone's life. I mean, yes, it, it's wonderful to to lead someone to just accept Christ, but to encourage someone in Christ to not uh, end their life. This is a privilege. It, it is not me at all. It's it's the work of the Holy Spirit. And I just that my words could be used in this way. But but understand that this what the seed was laid. The seed was laid some like 25 years ago. This is profound. <clears throat> you never know the impact of your relationships. And friends, you never know. Here I was in about 2017 recording lectures with, with my computer. And I felt impressed that I just needed to encourage these pastors that wherever they are, as they are listening to this, to be encouraged in the Lord. I don't usually say these words. I don't know what lecture it's from, but I know that's not some of my regular lecture content. And I just felt uh, it, in the series of lectures that I did, there were a number of opportunities that I just kind of preached a little bit of just encouraging them uh, in their faith. And so be in tune with the spirit. He will use you and he gives you words that they don't sound all too profound. They don't need to be profound and eloquent. And he will, he will use those words. So we make ourselves available to people. We let ourselves be in tune with the spirit. And lastly, I want to encourage you that as you make your, your media, as you share with friends the gospel, leave them something, point them to something of a resource, of a book, of a spiritual book, of, of a video series, um, perhaps Morning Manna, since it's recorded, amen? Uh, something that people can go and be edified in. These, these are religious books in video on the internet to leave a lasting, in, eternal, and life-changing experience uh, for those who listen, who watch. Uh, so I just want to encourage you and the Lord in this today. God is good, and, and he loves each of you, and he is working so far, so greater, so deeper behind the scenes. Oh, our Holy Spirit is so good. And so continue serving him in your regular life, uh, seeking to make a difference in the kingdom. So let me leave you with those words again. That apparently I said some six years ago, if we do our work for him, as best as we can. He is our judge. He is our savior. And he is our victor. Amen. And God bless you.
Amen. Amen. God amen. bless you. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Wow. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I don't know, you know, um, 20, 20 something years ago, Doc, uh, I, I was in a church uh, and the uh, Spirit of God was calling me to ministry. And a pastor preached a sermon and the church was packed with people, but I felt like I was the only one in that congregation. Uh, I had that same feeling this morning that, you know, there are many people here, over 100 people in morning manner. Uh, but you came, you spoke directly to me. Uh, I, I have been, I have been on that cliff. Uh, hey, brother, I didn't speak to you. It's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Keep I, I, going, I, have been, I have been certainly on that cliff, uh, not literally, but man, just at a place where you're saying, God, you know, it's over, it's done. And so God use God, God use you again, again, uh, through the Holy Spirit in a very powerful way to encourage my heart. Uh, to encourage my heart that we are called by him and we are here to serve him. We are so grateful. And I'm sure that many of us this morning in our own calling, in our own walk, in our own purpose uh, can resonate with that, uh, that sometimes you're at that place where you say, Lord, uh, it's over. Uh, but that was a word that was liberating. It was uh, just, 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 just a blessing this morning. And we want to thank you for that word. Um, saints of God, if you're in that place or you know someone in that place, uh, let us remember that God is just so awesome. He is able and uh, we are called to serve God and God only. Uh, so let us continue to pray for each other. I think Dr. Williams mentioned, hey, go ahead and share uh, this link with someone. Someone would be blessed by this word this morning. Go ahead uh, today and share the link with someone. Is there an invitation? You never know what someone is going through and the word for the morning may just be the very thing that they need uh, to know that God is still with us. And so go ahead and share the link and share that word with somebody today. Again, it's prayer and fasting. We will meet at noon at the well for our conversation at the well, and then we'll close our day uh, together in our Steps to Christ study. Saints of God, we appreciate you. We thank God for each and every one of you. Thank you, Dr. Williams, for that word this morning. I am blessed. I am certainly going to go back and hear that one again uh, because it spoke volumes into my heart. Let us pray today as we uh, close the day. Let us pray, keep praying for Patrick. We've been uh, the family of Patrick. We've been praying for him for some time. Uh, just, just saw in the text that uh, he passed. Uh, and so let's pray for his wife and their six-year-old son, uh, that God would be the comforting God that they would need in this season. Sister Walters, understanding you're not feeling well, they're in Turks and Caicos, and we're praying for you as well uh, today. Loving Father, ah, you set the table before us today, God, and you certainly did deliver for us the manner that we needed for today. Uh, Father, many of us have been discouraged at various points places in our ministries, in our lives, in our journey, in our work, in our calling, in our families, with life in general. But today, God, you send a reminder, God, that you can uh, inspire your servant to speak a word. And three years later, just at the right moment, uh, that word would be heard. Uh, Father, there are things, God, that you have put in motion uh, years ago, Father, that we would receive just at the moment when we needed provision, help, healing, all of the blessings of God. Uh, Father, you're not a God who uh, is right in the moment. God, you've gone before us. You're still behind us. You're all around us. And today, again, we thank you for your servant. Uh, Father, we pray, God, that you'll bless uh, Dr. Williams as he continues with his ministry, Father, of equipping ministers for the preaching of the gospel and for worship and for knowing that God, somehow he comes down with us and he is with us in our moments of worship. Father, we thank you for being that kind of God. May you continue, Lord, to lead and guide us. Father, today we heard you clearly. We heard you as you spoke. Uh, we thank you for this morning's manner. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. And amen. Well, have, a, have a wonderful day today, saints. Again, yeah. fasting, God be with you. Be a blessing. Thank you, Doc, uh, for sharing with us this morning. It was a joy to have you with us uh, today. Blessings, family. Be safe. Be well.